Now I'm going to look at another one where I give you the side, see this side here, the side, and an angle. I sometimes call this the naughty one because if I spell it angle side side, that would be a naughty word, which I refuse to say. So anyways, um, let's take a look. As you can see, I've got this so I can rotate it around, right? And I have my angles fixed. So I know that I'm going to have to connect on this dashed line somewhere. And I also know that I have this dashed line for this uh, point C. It can go anywhere on here as long as it stays at a length of 10. And I set my length here to 14. So if I bring this together, you can see from the dashed lines that it intersects right there. And it creates a triangle with an angle of 40, 14, angle of 70, 10, and an angle of 64. So that's one triangle. Does that mean that's the only triangle I can create with this angle side side combination? Well, actually, you can see by the dashed lines, I can create a completely different triangle by just bringing it in a little bit further because there are two intersections. So the naughty one, side side angle or angle side side, is not a valid postulate or theorem. You cannot prove that triangles are congruent just because they have an angle, a side, and a side, or a side-side angle. You can see right here, these are two different triangles. Angle side-side, which I won't say the shortcut for that one, is not a valid postulator theorem. How can we tell? As I showed you earlier on the video, you can look if I have this giant triangle. That's one way I can build this triangle with this angle that side and the other side. Or I can still build a different triangle like this one, this smaller one, with the same angle and the same two set of sides. They can both, it can actually be rotated and there are two ways to put the triangle together. So this is not a valid postulate or theorem to prove congruence. Normally we say it's the naughty one because it spells a naughty word. So don't use that one. Right here, we're looking at setting a leg in a hypotenuse for a triangle. So this one, I don't have um, an angle. All I have is two sides. But by saying hypotenuse, I'm saying a very special thing. I'm saying that this angle right here that connects the two legs has to be a right angle. So my leg has to be somewhere on this line. And my hypotenuse, I set the length. So it can be anywhere here, but the only way it will make a right triangle is if I have it intersect in this line. So you can see it makes a 4 and a 5. You probably recognize this one as a 3, 4, 5. There's 53 degrees and 37 degrees. If I go below, I pretty much have the same triangle, 53 and 37. So part of the reason that I'm able to set this, you're probably saying, well, wait a second. that's if she did that, that side side angle, that's the naughty postulate. But with right triangles, if you know two of the sides, whether it's the hypotenuse and leg or two legs, then you know the third side. So really with right triangles, we know side side side. So I'll go ahead and change this up a little bit. And we'll make the hypotenuse a little, oh, I, hypotenuse cannot be smaller than the leg. All right. So here you go. You can see there's the one triangle you can make and there's the other triangle you can make. So hypotenuse leg is just a shortcut for side, side, side. We're just not making you do the Pythagorean theorem to find the other side. Similarly, we could say if I had given you two legs, then the hypotenuse could only be one place. And again, using Pythagorean theorem. So when we have a right triangle, and this is only when we have this perpendicular here, I only need to know two sides to establish congruence. Hypotenuse leg, uh, the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem says you only need to know the hypotenuse in a leg to prove that two right triangles are congruent. And the reason is, is technically you actually know the third leg because 
right triangles obey the Pythagorean theorem. So you know all three legs if you know the hypotenuse in a leg. By the way, there's also a leg leg theorem, same idea. If you know two legs, then you automatically know the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. So you can actually use either a leg with a hypotenuse or you could even do two legs. So should there be an angle-angle congruence theorem? If yes, justify your reasoning. If no, then provide a counterexample. So think about some of the ways we classify triangles by angle and in there you might find a clue to the answer to this question. If we know that if we make a triangle and we have another triangle and all three angles match, do we know for sure that they have to be the same size? All right, but this is not the end of your notes even though I put the reflect in early. So example one, we want to write the reason each pair of triangles is congruent. And the markings, I should have had an extra mark here. Let me change to a pen. Uh, let me go ahead and on the 40, I'll put two marks there. I feel better now. Two congruent marks. They shouldn't match within the triangle if they're not the same angle. So first of all, you can see we have an angle right here connected to a side connected to an angle. Starting the same spot here with a 40 degree angle connected to the side connected to the angle. This is the included side and both of these are congruent by angle side angle. This one here we have two congruent angles right there. Then we have, it doesn't say anything about this side so I'm not going to write an S there. I'm going to actually put an A because that's the next one I run across angle, angle, and then their sides. So the reason these two are congruent is angle, angle, side. 